All right, so when you have your kit and your markers, um, the first thing I need you to do on your Ziploc bag, and we do have a piece of tape, but write it on the bag is write your name. We will be taking these up at the end of class. So if you don't have your markers now, I'll remind you to write your name after. Um, then you have, you can take out the things in your kit. You have a popsicle stick, a um, toothpick. Those will be sculpting tools. You have your model magic and a piece of tape and your bag. You do need a pair of scissors, so go ahead and get that out now of your supplies. And we're gonna cut this open a very specific way. So hang tight, don't do it yet. When you open this, and uh, you will have a guide too. Hold on, let me go get my guide. Um, but when you open your model magic, just remember, <clears throat> Like most things in art, we need to use them appropriately. So make sure that you are not bouncing it or throwing it. Also, um, it will stick to surfaces that are a paper or stick to itself. So uh, you do have this guide. If you're going to use this guide and you wanna use it as a, um, a stencil, you should put it underneath your bag so that way you can work on your bag and it doesn't stick uh, to the paper itself. Okay, once you have your model magic, I want you to cut off the top edge. The goal is to make sure that we have most of this package intact, which means that I, it's, it's gonna be flat, um, but it shouldn't be ripped kind of randomly. So try your best to, once you have cut off the top edge, peel the middle open, or you can cut it open straight like this. I kind of ripped it a little bit, but that's okay. And take your model magic out. So your packaging should be as flat as possible. You could even trim that off. You don't have to do that. Um, because at the end, when we have little extra pieces, we're going to wrap it up, use the extra tape and um, separate it from our main piece. So right now you can put the packaging to the side and you can work directly on your table. It's not really gonna stick to your table. Now we need to split this model magic into three. So I like to kind of take my fingers and stretch it a little bit like that. So that way it's a little bit longer. And you're gonna kind of eyeball it um, to make three even pieces. So um, what I do is I kind of go from the middle and then I Try to eyeball thirds. So that looks like about thirds. And go ahead and cut it. I stretched it also so it's a little easier to cut. Now once you have three even pieces, we're going to, one's going to be the base, one is going to be the eyelid, and one is going to be the details. So I want you to take one piece, your base, and you can use your um, stencil for this, and you're going to roll it into a ball. And this one's gonna stay white because we're not really gonna see it. So go ahead and roll it into a ball, like that. Once it is rolled into a ball, you're going to squish it down so it's a circle or kind of like a flat, I call it a cookie shape. So it's flatter. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on this part so you can see. Um, so it's about as tall as the stencil. And then all you need to do is kind of stretch it into an oval. So once it's a flat kind of cookie, stretch it by gently pulling it. And I'm moving so I can kind of pull the areas that feel thicker. 
so the middle doesn't get too skinny. Um, and you're gonna flatten it and to, to, till it's about the size of this part of the stencil that says base. It does not have to be the same shape. You can pinch the edges a little bit. It could be a little bigger too. Um, but your goal is that it's not too skinny. Actually, everything in this should never be too skinny or it could crack or, um, yeah, basically it'll just crack. So a good measurement, if you are making things that, um, especially that are big areas and are not gonna stick to things, is that if you take it on its side and it is as skinny as our sketchbooks are. So um, let me grab a sketchbook so I can kind of show you but right now you should be kind of stretching with your fingers and making the base like that. And grab a sketchbook. Yeah, so nothing ever should be skinnier than your sketchbook. Once you have your base, you're gonna put your glass eye into it. You're gonna push it down in the middle just enough for it to stick. So it does not need to be too deep, but it shouldn't fall out. All right, so the next part we're gonna do is the eyelid, which as you see, it's the same shape, but we're gonna cut it in half. For the eyelid, so put one to the side still. For the eyelid, we're going to think about um, coloring it. So there's two ways to kind of think about color for Melo Magic. Um, one way is going to be just mixing a color, and the other is going to be marbling. Um, there's not much of a difference other than how much you mix it. So I'm gonna have an extra piece here just to kind of show you um, the second way. When you are coloring your model magic, you wanna flatten it so that there is a lot of surface area. So this is gonna be my eyelid. I'm gonna marble this one, but I'll also show you on this extra piece um, how to make it solid. Remember, there is still one piece over here that you're not gonna color uh, because you're gonna use it for details. So. Let me talk to you first about the basic, um, <clears throat> the basic way to make a color with clay. Um, so you can stretch it out. What colors am I gonna use for this one? Yep, stretch it out. Take the side of the marker and color the whole top surface area. The reason you're doing that is because you want as much ink on it as you can. So this is normal mixing. You're going to fold it, kind of stretch it a little bit, fold it, stretch it, and keep folding and stretching it until it mixes. So it will start to, as you stretch it, the color will start to come out to the outside. All the colors will end up kind of light, so pink will be your color. If you want red, if you get, yeah, if you use red, you will get pink. Folding and stretching. It's okay if it breaks, just put it back together. If it's, you're not gonna get like red, red, but like if you wanna add color to it, I like sometimes add a little bit of orange. I'm gonna add some brown and see what happens too. But color, fold it and stretch it. The great part about using the analogous, the colors that we're using, is that if you, um, when you mix them, they will, turn out okay when you mix them. Not all the time, but most of the time. Um, Say if I had like red and green in here, it might not end up a great color. So that kind of ended up a peachy color because I decided to add some other 
colors to it, that's okay. So that's how you'd mix a solid color. And I could use this solid color for my eyelid and put it on. Um, to marble, you basically do the same thing except for you do not mix it all the way. <clears throat> So I'm gonna try to go kind of extreme on this one. I'm gonna do, and you wanna do more than one. Actually, you don't have to do more than one color, but you could. Um, we'll try this. We'll see what happens. Mm. Okay, so when you marble, you're going to fold, stretch, fold, stretch, maybe five or six times. It's starting to go. Um, and then I would just roll it and stretch it. So it's kind of getting there. Might have a hard time with this one. But you basically aren't going to fold it enough for it to mix all the way. That's pretty good. So you can see it has more of a swirly texture because of how I colored it. Um, yeah, I think I'll keep it like that. If I kept mixing it, it might end up a kind of a gray color, um, but that's the color it's going to be for this next part. <clears throat> so whatever color you decide to mix, you're going to do the same process where you roll into a ball, you squish it down, into about cookie sized and then you want to stretch it out to be the same shape as your base. That's kind of cool. Once you have it stretched, you see this dotted line? That means we're gonna cut it long ways. So go ahead and with your scissors, cut it long ways. And this is your top and your bottom eyelid. So you can put it on top like that. See, I'm kind of squeezing it so that way I can make room for the eye or the glass to show. Put this on the bottom and I can squeeze it together to make it a little more closed around the eye. I could leave it open. That is up to you. And there we go. So for this next part, um, I'm gonna talk to you about coils, scales, and spirals, and twists. Now these are all optional, um, of course, and I want you to make these decisions as you go. Uh, stick to your color scheme. So I guess my color scheme was kind of reds and um, black and yellow. But what you're going to do is you're gonna use that extra you have to think of how to make some of these. Um, so one thing that I had on the slideshow was wrinkles. So for wrinkles, you can kind of use your toothpick around your eye like this and press it in. Kind of making these little divots. You can do a lot of things with um, with your toothpick and your popsicle stick. Um, now, when you make things, remember once it's on here, it's kind of stuck on here. Also, you can color things as you go if you want to. So I think I'm going to start with a coil and I'm gonna try to make it kind of, um, reddish. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit off of my detail piece, color it, blend it. Of course, it's gonna look pink. And a coil is just a snake of model magic. So you start by rolling it one direction, back and forth, and you can then use your fingers to roll out the parts that are not quite as even. Think about what you're gonna do. So like mine's gonna go underneath my eye and then curl in. So it's gonna go under here. And then curl in like that. That's pretty cool. So that's a coil and kind of actually a spiral too. I'll show you another spiral in a minute. Um, I'm gonna do a twist next, which is just two coils together. So I'm gonna do red and black, which really doesn't turn black. It's more like a gray, <laughs> greenish. Later on, I can also just use straight marker on here if I want to, to make like dots and stuff like that. They do, um, diffuse, which means that they, um, even though you draw really sharp uh, lines and dots, they end up kind of like blurring after a while. There's one. And I could keep some of these colors marbled if I want to. So this one actually, this coil ends up a little bit marbled. one. There's two. To twist them, I just put them together and twist. One's going forward. One's going backwards. If this messes up, I could always also just like kind of marble this together. I'm going to go ahead and stick this one on like this. I do have some extra, so I will, I'll use this for something. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Okay, so I have coils and spirals. Um, maybe this one I'll do like a, a mixed spiral. So I'm just gonna roll it together. That's kind of cool. And then a spiral is just a kind of bent in cinnamon roll that way. So under and over, it's like an S curve almost. All right, so let's talk about scales and spikes. They're the same, but um, they end up looking a little different. So <clears throat> for scales, You're just making little spheres of model magic. So I like to make them all first before I stick them on. Um, and you can kind of like make them, um, you can make them all like lined up together or you can keep them separate. That's up to you. They can. As long as they're really stuck on there, the size doesn't matter as much. You can make them kind of smaller. I like to make them thicker. And remember, if things touch, they will stick together. Okay, so for scales, kind of push them down. I like to overlap mine a little bit kind of start on top of it and then squish it down. It's like a little bean bag. Um, you could also, <clears throat> like I said, keep them separate. So maybe I'll do some separate ones down here. So not overlapping, but maybe next to each other. Like that.
And I'm thinking about balance as I'm doing this. I'm trying to, if I put orange scales on one side, I might wanna put them on the other side. Like that. All right, spikes are very similar. So let me do some, <clears throat> some spikes. And what color do I wanna do them? All right, let's go ahead and try this. <clears throat> So for spikes, I want you start them the same way as scales, make little balls of model magic. <laughs> when they're small like this, I kind of just use a finger instead of using my whole hand because they'll probably get lost. Interesting spikes. Okay, so once you have a ball for a spike, um, or so for, um, that looks kind of like a scale one. What I do is I only try to roll one side of it. So I put my finger on half of it and then I roll that like a coil. And what happens is I kind of do it at an angle. It tries to, it squeezes and rolls, but then eventually as I tilt, it becomes spiky. So try to watch that again. You have it like this and then you only touch half of it and you roll, trying to make a little kind of funnel. These are kind of cool. <clears throat> Here you go and roll. You could also just pinch them. So you could like take it and then pinch it. So that way you're getting a spike like that whatever technique works for you. All right, we got scales, we got spikes. Um, remember, you can also use your tools to create other textures. So you could add more wrinkles, you could, um, also add like a scale kind of pattern by like using a pencil and making like dots. So there's like inward scales and outward scales. Um, so I could add like dots like that, or I could even add dots with my marker. So, and like I said, this will diffuse later. So I'm going to make some indents with my black marker on this one and it will start to diffuse which means that it will kind of bleed and make this um, a different color later not as intense I would use this more for texture than for like drawing specific lines All right, so I think that covers a lot of our techniques. Uh, remember, this is your creation. You can have it be your own. Um, if I'm, cl I'm in class, we'll pause now, and then at the end, I'm gonna show you how to clean up because I have extra that I need to keep. All right, for extra, what we need to do is, um, your extra, you don't want it to touch your dragon eye because you don't want it to stick to it. So depending on, oops, just stuck those together. Uh, depending on how much extra you have, you might need to, if I have two extra pieces, I might need to cut this in half. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna make these into little packages. So you're going to like make a package for each color and you're gonna roll it up and bend it or fold it in so it is its own little package. It does not have to be airtight, it just can't escape. So once again, watch that again, kind of roll it like a little burrito, fold the ends over the same direction 
or however you can get it to stay and then tape it. Um, once you have your little packages of extra, you can, in your bag, go ahead and put your tools. Um, if we're taking this home for some reason, I might ask you to put your markers in, your extra pieces, and then your eye. So um, make sure that direction-wise, I might tell you to take markers a different way. Actually, this is a really bad idea. I'll probably have you take markers a different way if you are taking markers. Um, and go ahead and put the eye in. You do not put the um, paper in because that would also stick to your eye. So your table should look like this. So when I come pick it up, it is ready to go.